we'll get started. All right. So today we have Rain Parvis. Now, Rain, you've got a really fascinating job, and I'm not even sure I could like do it justice. So you're like a professional stylist, right? Style coach. Absolutely. I don't know. There's like a million different ways we can we can classify you, but why don't you just go ahead and tell everyone listening exactly what it is you do? Okay, great. Well, I started out as a personal stylist, which basically means I'm focused on the person rather than you have the wardrobe stylists, which are more focused on showcasing the clothes. So I just work one-on-one with people. And then I got certified as a style coach from the Style Coaching Institute because I felt like there's so much more than just a great outfit. And most of the people that do receive like makeovers on what not to wear, or, you know, your favorite daytime talk show, they always revert back to the way they dress. So I really wanted to kind of mix in the life coaching schools along with the fashion. And that's why I kind of consider myself a style coach. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty cool. So you work with actual clients, like one-on-one with clients to get them. So do they, do the clients, do they come to you and say like, Hey, I want what, let's say you work with men or mostly women, men, uh, men and women. Yes. All right. So let's say a man comes up to you and says, I want to look good enough to get a date. So how would you style a man like that? I would definitely And let, let's pretend with, that yes. he's not he's not the greatest looking guy. So let's let's give you the worst case scenario. How would you <laughs> <laughs> The first thing I would possibly that I would personally do is just go um, ask him if I can go through his closet cuz that's where the problems start. That's where the habits are. That's where maybe he's looking over certain things like yellow armpit stains or clothes that don't fit. So from there I also go by color because if you are trying to be like a sophisticated man, women are more attracted to like the darker colors rather than like the pastels and the blues. They just look at a man more sexy. That's why you barely ever see George Clooney in like a pastel shirt. He's always like sharp, darker colors, <laughs> dressed to the nine and fitted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've always, let's see, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, um, Ryan Reynolds, those guys are always dre- like, I see him walk on the red carpet. And I'm like, God. Dang that guy. He looks so good. And then I try, you know, I try it. I remember, um, I remember once I watched the, uh, man of steel, right. Um, yeah. it was, it was like a Superman movie and I saw like what Superman was wearing and I was like, man, I, that would be so cool if I could look like that. And I just could not pull it off. So, <laughs> um, you, first of all, I'm looking right at you. You can pull it off. It's really <laughs> just the tailoring and then the fit and then getting comfortable and making yourself kind of break out of your norm. Because I mean, you look awesome right now. The, uh, what is it? Hendurance workout gear. <laughs> I just threw something on, you know, I, <laughs> no, no, it looks awesome, but you're probably used to wearing that stuff a lot or whatever you're used to anything wearing, comfortable so. is, you know, I'm married, so I don't have to impress any girls anymore. I've got the girl I want so so I am just anything comfortable you're good good. (laughs) although my wife might disagree (laughs) no I'm sure your wife loves you no matter what what you wear but I mean I like you know when I first met my husband he needed a makeover so Uh you made him over yeah he hired me to make him over and then I was like dang I did such a good job I was like really attracted to him after (laughs) (laughs) so you essentially you truly made the man of your dreams like you dressed him up and was like damn, I did a good job. <laughs> yes. And of course, you know, it's more of like, he's so confident. And I always say confident over style any day. Um, you know, women are definitely more attracted to confidence than like, are they perfectly dressed? Do they have the right shoe? So that's always first. And then the style is kind of secondary. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're actually like this about 90% of my clients actually come from matchmaking agencies. So that's okay. why, like, I've always had a heart for singles women in your possession who have just like got a divorce or a breakup right. and so we're just kind of reinventing their confidence as well. Well, that's a perfect segue because I was going to say, all right, so what can someone going through a breakup do? Because just to preface this, people who have gone through a breakup that come to my website, they are in a really, really bad place emotionally. Uh, uh-huh. And so oftentimes they're not the most confident people. So it's sort of, I always tell them, hey, like just get on the board, get a quick win. So sort of, I I briefly mentioned it on the website when people read the articles. I was like, oh yeah, get a makeover or you know buy buy yourself right. some new clothes because I'm just 
I can give them insight to the mind of a man, but I am not a woman. So I don't know like what looks good on women, which is perfect. That's why I have you here. So <laughs> how can they get on the board here? How can they sort of dress for success, so to speak? Again, it comes back to discipline. You just have to, I mean, like not eating the extra piece of cheesecake, you have to discipline yourself to put a little bit of more effort into your appearance. Mm -hmm. So you may, I don't walk out of the house looking like my 10 every single day, every time, like even this video, I'm like a seven right now. <laughs> like I could got my and, hair done. And just to know, dress, but... you're, you're seven, you literally got it done in 10 minutes. I, I wanted to... <laughs> you know, test rain. So originally this uh, was like for 4 p.m. we had the schedule and I was like, yeah. eh, I want to get this over with right now. So I'm just going to test her and see how fast she can get ready. And like within 10 minutes, she was ready and looking like this. So yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is my seven. Um, I always say everyone has a six, a seven, eight, nine, ten. Try not to leave the house anything less than like a six. And then when it comes to makeovers, you really want to start with, I always say start with your toes and go to your hair or start with your hair and go to your toes. Okay. So it can be as simple as, you know, not making a huge drastic change when it comes to like going from blonde to brunette, which I did and I looked horrible and I'll never do that again. Um, <laughs> it can just be like a little bit of highlights, a fresh cut, and then you kind of work your way down. Um, are your eyebrows you know, looking on fleek, as they say, right. do you need a facial? Are your teeth all um, yellow from drinking wine for the last five years in your bed and you need to like a refresh? <laughs> so, um, you know, or, or do you want to start with your toes and do like a, um, a pedicure and kind of work your way up? Oh my gosh, my legs are so white. I know that I'm going to be out there wearing dresses again. So maybe I'll get like a little fake tanning lotion. So just kind of work your way up and give yourself leeway and permission to take it slow. Cool, cool. Yeah, so let's start from head to toe. I, I realize everyone is unique, right? Everyone has a right. unique look that's probably going to work better for them as opposed to other people. But let's say if you could try to find some, some sort of commonality between the looks that people, in this case men, would find attractive, what would you do? What are some of the sort of the, the basic tips for someone? The basic tips would be – all men are initially more attracted to red. So this is like a perfect like Valentine's yeah. Day example, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so when I do the photo styling for the matchmaking agencies, we always do one casual and then one um, dress up. So I always say, okay, let's try to find your red. So most women are gonna go for like this fire engine red, but you wanna find your red. If you're blonde with like blue eyes, it's probably gonna be a blue red. If you're my coloring with like golden blonde and like green eyes with yellow, it's gonna be like maybe a brick red. If you're African American, it's gonna be like a bright electric red. So it's a lot of information, but don't just go for the natural red. You can go for a magenta, a pink, like a flirty color. And those are more flirtatious, so it's going to draw more attention, which is why you always see Carl's Jr., in and out <laughs> McDonald's, because men want that red. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, wait, so I was talking about, yeah, so wear flirtier colors. That's, like, key. So you want to kind of ditch all your black, and, you know, you want to be a little bit more out there. And colors leave a little bit of more openness for people to comment on your outfit more oh my gosh i love that red sweater or right. look at that purple sweater so you want to kind of leave it open rather than being so standoffish that the man won't talk to you yeah i, I so i i'm assuming red sort of men associate because the first thing i think of oh sex yeah sex right <laughs> so that's yeah. what they're associating with it so i I think that's great. And have you ever like looked into the psychology of colors? Like, you know, like baby blue sort of like breeds trust. Right. And, right. and I don't, I think red is power or something like that. So is, is there a bit power, of that put into sex. the, yes, absolutely. And then like blue is like calmness, like you said, trustworthy. Right. right. So I always like give like my speaking clients like, Oh, if you're going to speak, try to throw a little blue into your outfit. And another thing is that you have to remember is, when some people go for a makeover, they like overdo it when it's by themselves. And sometimes you don't need like the three inch press on nails. Men don't find like that attractive. You know, men love um, natural hair and you don't want to put so much product and like wheeze in it that they can't like imagine running their hair through it. Um, so you want to like be yourself and just accentuate it rather than 
plopping so much makeup, outfits, you know, Louis Vuitton. It's like, let's take you, make it shine. So the next man or your ex that comes into your life will see you in your best light. So I don't know if this might be a touchy subject, but let's say someone's a little bit overweight, right? Do you Mm -hmm. work with them on how to get away, kind of get around that? Like, do you work with them on uh, sort of the look as a whole, or is there a certain way to dress if maybe you're a little bit uncomfortable of your body image? I always say you want to make over yourself in mind, body, and style, because just like a lot of the clients who, you know, I can put a client in a perfect outfit, but if they don't feel good, they're going to look uncomfortable and that's going to come off. So when it comes to your mind, you have to say, Hey, you know, this is what God gave me. This is what I'm going to work with. And there are certain ways that you can dress. Like for example, the simplest thing that I can say is if you are a little bit overweight and this goes for a size two or size 24, you always want to um, show your waist. So you're like, Hey, I'm a woman. I'm, did you say Adele last night on the Grammys? I, uh, I caught like when she had cursed or something like, like she yeah. was doing the George Michael thing. I didn't watch it yeah. live. So I just saw like, you know, Twitter and everything freaking out about it. But, um, it's, it's crazy that you say that I was literally listening to Adele when I was working earlier today. Oh my God. that's so funny. <laughs> But I don't know what size she is, but she's a fuller woman and she yeah. always looks amazing. Like she's accentuating her curves. She's so beautiful. She's always cinching in that way. She's making a V neck and you know, if your legs aren't your go-to, then maybe it's uh, your neck or your back. Or um, three-quarter lengths are also the sexiest part of a woman that most people are thin right here. So you always want to wear sleeves that are about like this. Oh, so Three you want through. to accentuate the, the skinnier part. The delicate, of the... Yes, okay. the delicate parts of your body. And then color, too. So color, uh, confidence, and then trying new things. And again, it doesn't mean that you're going to have to throw yourself and wear a dress every day, but it's like, are you accentuating your waist? That's one, that's one of the tips that I always do. Interesting. Interesting. Because I, I, I feel most people who are a little uncomfortable, a little overweight, they want to hide that aspect of them. So they wear kind of baggier type clothes. Um, but you're sort of saying, don't be afraid to show it off. So I guess it kind of goes into that confidence aspect of, right. um, so What would you say are some other tips that some people can use to become more confident with their body image? You have to get used to seeing people that have your same body type look amazing. So I'm not, I think there's a, a, (laughs) thank you. And then you kind of want to pin it. So I know a lot of people are on Pinterest. So if you look like Adele, find a lot of pictures of Adele and start pinning it so you can get used to seeing that type of body in a dress. If you have the same body type as Oprah, Google pictures of Oprah and start pinning her so you can kind of see what she's wearing, see how great she looks, see how she's working it. And then you can kind of copy um, the stars who have the same body type and age as you. So then you'll get used to seeing it. Because right now, when you look in the magazine, and I'm sure that you've gone over, it's like all we do is see 85% of the photos are like size two women with like right. no curves. So that's where we're used to seeing. That's what we're thinking is seeing sexy, but that's not life. So you get used to seeing those photos, start pinning those photos of women that have your same size um, onto Pinterest. So you can just open it up and get inspired and then go shopping. <laughs> Those are great tips. Like I, I would have never even thought of that. But, uh, you know, now that I hear it, it's like, wow, that's such that's such good advice, too. I wish I had done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do we, okay so if you know if you go to your pinterest board you know how like a george clooney board up we know yeah. why <laughs> yeah right right go to george clooney brad pitt like matt damon every every, every guy i ever wanted to be you know yeah you, you'll get you're... total insight into me and sort of like who i aspire to be you know <laughs> yeah and then you'll start doing your interviews in like a text they'll be like hey Chris, you're taking a little bit too far. Oh, it's funny. It's funny you say that. I um, so I remember one year my wife she had a big Christmas party, right? It was the uh, first year that we were married, and so she says, "Oh, because I didn't have like a suit. Like I'm from Texas, right? We're like uh-huh. super country there. Um, not that I love country music or anything like that, um, but." I had to go out and get the suit, right? And so I go to a men's warehouse and I get like one of the more expensive suits. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going to dress so good. I'll be the best dressed guy there. And so we get there and literally there were probably like 50 different versions of me. And I was like, oh man. And now, (laughs) and now since, you know, we had our daughter, 
I don't oh. even I don't even fit into the dang thing anymore. So it was like oh, it's literally no. sitting in the co- the closet. So I'll have to like now I'll have to go for a run after this. <laughs> well, see if they can take it out, right? Because you can always. It's not only about taking in; you can take it out, and then. This goes for women too. Whatever you buy from any warehouse or men or whatever, always add a little bit of something to you. So you could have had like your favorite pocket square that maybe your dad gave mm-hmm. you that you just switching out the pocket square that you bought with it would have made it look like a different suit and more crisp than like, you know, you just bought this out of the men's warehouse. And that goes <laughs> for ladies too. Like a lot of times when I buy dresses or whatever, it'll come with um, a built in belt. That's the first thing I do is take out that belt put it away and then put on my own belt. So it's always kind of emulating like me and my style and it won't look like everybody else. So here's another interesting story for you. When I first met my wife, she wore white on purpose. She told Mm -hmm. me she wore white because she wanted to make me like associate her with marriage. And I remember she's wearing this white dress and she had one of those belts, but she had kind of styled it a little bit differently than the, I guess the kind that came with it. Um, so I don't know why I told you that story. I'm just, (laughs) no, I'm sure it's, she looked really great. So even I married her, so it worked. Yeah. That's the key to getting (laughs) married. (laughs) And white is with like purity and, you know, virginity and all that kind of stuff. And like, um, that's why we say like white space. And, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like for my wedding dress, I actually used a black hair piece it was like a black sash thing that everybody was wearing their hair from david's bridal so i went like like it david's bridal is the woman's version of men's warehouse right a lot of the stuff is cookie cutter whatever so my dress i took the hair thing and it was black and then i wrapped it around my waist and that was my belt so no one else had my belt because it technically wasn't a belt (laughs) (laughs) well uh it's 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 really fascinating how the sort of the colors can sort of subconsciously make you associate someone with something, right? So right. we've kind of gone into some of the colors women should wear, like red. What are some of the colors they shouldn't wear? Uh, well, again, it's what your what message you're trying to. Who are you trying oh, to? Perfect, attract? perfect. Let's make this yeah. harder on you. So, what are <laughs> yeah. the different messages we're trying to to sort anything of- colorful? So um, red, pink, um, magenta, violet, uh, any of the jewel tones that are like really rich, those are always, anything that's up for a compliment, I, you know, is going to look great. And when, it's always more towards the red. And I hate this too because I originally shot my, when I was, when I originally shot my video that's on my website, you guys could go see it. it I'm in a pink shirt a pink blouse, like a magenta blouse and like a leopard skirt. Fine. But at the time that I shot that, I was looking for a husband so badly that I was wearing like magenta to everything. And I'm like, oh my God, I really wish I wore a blue blouse instead of that pink blouse for the opening (laughs) of my website, but whatever. So, (laughs) so just light colors, flirty colors. Springtime is also great for mating. So anything that's either like the spring color palettes that represent flowers are going to be flirty. It's fascinating. And, I, you know, if if you were to meet me probably before I met my wife, I would literally say like, ah, that stuff doesn't matter, but it actually works. Like it worked right. on me and I don't even think I was aware of it. So I think that's kind of like the power of it. It's, it's really fascinating. So, sorry. So I would probably eliminate brown. brown. I don't know. Yeah. Brown kind of like. Poop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, oh my gosh. That's so funny. I always say if the color represents Something that comes out of one of your orifices. <laughs> don't wear it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so brown, I would say. <laughs> what about purple? So what would purple represent? Purple actually represents um, unity. And then it's a great for animal rights color. It's against domestic violence. It's a great calming color. It's an inviting royalty. Um, a lot of like the old biblical stories right. like Jesus. Y'all see like the yeah, royalty the in the purple, big purple robes. Right. right. Um, so that's a beautiful color to wear. Uh, that's a very flirty color as well. I love purple. Any any color, purple, violet, it's awesome. Okay, let's let's let, let's do some. This is going to be a fun little exercise. Let's. I, I'm going to give you a situation, and I want you to basically dress the woman I give you in the situation. How how would you dress her? So here's the situation. Okay. Person's going on the first date with their ex. First date, okay. and they're really wanting to get him back. Right? How would you dress her? 
And let's just say she's just an average looking woman. How would you dress this girl? Uh, dress for sure. Dress. Flirty. Yes. And then always pick one thing to flaunt. So if you're accentuating your legs, don't have your cleavage coming out. If you're going to accentuate your cleavage, maybe wear a dress that goes a little bit down to more towards your knees. Because again, like you want to look, you don't want to look cheap. You don't want the man just to want you for the one night thing, which is another reason why if you are going to wear the red and the pink, you have to make sure it's in a classy silhouette and not just like a cheap, you know, tank top red dress with your butt cheeks hanging out. So you got to make sure that the silhouette is classy. And this is a way you can always do that too, is look back to the 1950s or Eva Longoria always wears those very form fitting dresses, but they're not really showing too much skin. Mm -hmm. They're always kind of longer, um, form fitting as well. And then you also want to have, again, always have your hair down. Men love hair and just look healthy, <laughs> look vibrant. Don't wear too much makeup. Don't, you know, don't kind of go overboard because you want to say like cool and calm and collect. And I always say, make sure your heels aren't too high either. Cause you just look a little bit clumsy and you slow down it's like you want to be comfortable so you recommend wearing heels heels but not too high like okay we've all we've all seen these women right. that are wearing like five inch heels and they just look like a hot mess <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the the heels are for me i feel so bad for you guys that you have to wear that because i've seen my wife wear it it's like oh my god she's gonna mess up her feet i'm like you don't have to wear that like you don't it, i know <laughs> luckily this is a side note we'll get back to that first date in a minute but mm -hmm. a side note this season, and again, I usually dress people according to their personal, uh, their personal style, but the heels are totally out. So we're seeing like a lot of kitten heels, a lot of flat boots, a lot of like uh, uh, mules, which are about one inches. So your wife will be thankful. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> she loves sandals. So back to the first you know? date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love it when those gladiators came back. Our feet were like, woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so first date. All right. So, okay. So. Uh, the dress, you're going to kind of accentuate one area, either cleavage or legs. Um, oh. Now let's assume someone who's got a really, really low confidence level and what can they wear on this date to make them feel more confident? I would say if you're not into a dress, wear a nice blouse that's like flirty, mm -hmm. it's soft, um, wear your perfect fitting jeans. Jeans are really hot. My husband loves me in jeans as well. And just yeah, wear would, what you I would feel second that. I, I, I like I like jeans as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, my wife. Um, so for some reason, every time I think of going on dates with her, I, I feel like she's always wearing white. You know, so that's just sort of like the the association. She was like I wedding, have with her. wedding, wedding. Right, right. It worked. It worked too. You know, like. Like I didn't realize it at the time, but then she's sitting there and, you know, across the altar, I was like, oh, wait, she's wearing white. <laughs> Subliminal messages. <laughs> yep, it worked. It worked. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it just comes. And you know what else is really great is for the women to take a photo of yourself in your outfit play around with it first so you're not stressed the day of the date. So maybe try yourself in a dress, try yourself in a perfect fitting jeans and a light magenta blouse with some sparkly earrings or something. And then see which ones you like better. Maybe text the photo to a friend whose fashion advice you admire, or they can send you the photo and be like, hey, Chris, if you were single and going out <laughs> a date, which one would you like, like better, right? <laughs> so just ask someone who's, um, who you'd like to attract and see what they say. Okay, so let's switch gears here and say mm -hmm. the person's at a party and then they know their ex is going to be there, but they don't want their ex back. So what can they say to maybe make him feel like, oh, I made the biggest mistake of my life? Or what can they say? What can they wear to make him feel like he, they made the biggest mistake of his life? Just look awesome, look confident, look like you don't mind being the life of the party and you have nothing to hide and you've moved on. Perfect. Perfect. Thank Very you. <laughs> short and to the point. Loved it. <laughs> so, so have you ever worked with any clients who've gone through breakups who are sort of wanting your help? <coughs> Excuse me. No problem. Probably about 80% of them. <laughs> 80%. Perfect. You know, send them my yeah. way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will. Well, this is probably going to go out to all them too. So definitely. Um, yeah, I would just say the main thing is the mind, body, and style. Makeover isn't just about your wardrobe. It's about your mind. You have to kind of get out there and try new things so you have new stuff to talk about. So back to your how do you impress your ex-boyfriend or whatever. It's like, hey, I'm taking a karate class. You want to see my new moves? Or I, I mean, I'm sure he's stalking your Facebook anyway. So you yeah. can like, oh, look at, um, I'm trying all these new restaurants with new friends. Look at my new hiking gear. Yeah, I recommend um, to do all of this stuff because like yeah. statistics have shown like 95% of their of X is like creep, you know, Facebook creep. Right. It's And it's true. Even if they've blocked them, my wife always tells the story of her friend that um, literally would ask her to spy on the ex for her. So like even even if yeah. you think they're not watching, they're watching. So They're watching, they're stalking, they're signing in through other people's Facebooks. So I would just say have bring more to the table than you had when you were in the relationship. Because I think what a lot of people happens when you get into a relationship, you stop learning, you start just to rely on your significant other to do whatever. So it's just really important when you are alone to get out there and like you said, like try new things, have more stuff to talk about and, tech, and then really, you're not just gonna be acting like you're moved on and you don't give a SHIT, you will be moving on. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rain, you're pretty interesting because before you, you, we kind of started recording, you told me the, the story of how you met your husband and I thought it would be perfect to share because Aww. it is so, it, I had never heard a story like this before. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay, so well, I originally met my husband at a home poker game okay. and we were friends like a, a girlfriend of mine brought me and we were friends for like six years. He kind of always had a crush on me. So he always court me and say, Hey, do you need your buy? This is when I was broke, right? He's like, do you want me to be bro get you in? I'll get you money. I'll bring your favorite wine. I was like, Oh, okay. And I never really paid any attention because one, I was probably, you know, just not really looking for a husband, not looking for anything serious. I was focused on my career, doing whatever I was that I was doing. And then when I really started to um, look for a husband, I just started saying yes to everybody and everything. And he actually had a different um, person at the time. But he, when I first started my business, he paid me to make him over. So I think it was his so way he, to he, like, he dropped he dropped to the person to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> he he yeah. really wanted you. <laughs> well, no, he just wanted to support my business, okay. right? Okay, that's what we'll say. <laughs> but it was also a way to hang out with me by himself for the first time. And he had a comb over, he had pleats, he always wore golf clothes. So I just never really looked at him in like a sexy type way because I always mm -hmm. saw, saw him at the poker game. So when we when we took him shopping and he was in like a suit and you know bye bye comb over and he had like that short buzz not Laura haircut I was like wow I did such a great job he was so attractive <laughs> you <laughs> dressed you me, dressed your said, future yeah. husband the way you and you just instantly that's a way that, that's my favorite part of the story you dressed your your future husband up I did and that was <laughs> and then I moved actually ended up moving near him so it was like oh let me take you out and um but the main thing was the confidence was you know he already had the confidence mm -hmm. but when I saw him in a new light with like fresh clothes looking sexy it was like yeah okay maybe this can work <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been married two and a half years two and a half I feel like my wife and I two and a half years but we have we have a baby which which means we don't get much sleep. <laughs> well, you're very lucky. We're trying right now. <laughs> <laughs> any luck? Oh, any luck with the baby? I'm not pregnant that I know of. So if you guys want to send me some pregnancy well, prayers, I'll, I'm all up I'm on it. I'm sending them your way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your wife to send me some tips. <laughs> I, sh I, I Lingerie work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, not kidding, but kidding for the yeah. podcast, you know. No, no, I, I got that. I, guess, <laughs> I used to work for Frederick, so I have all my old Frederick stuff still in boxes, unfortunately. I got to dust them off for Valentine's Day, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was your book. So your mm -hmm. book, The Ultimate Guide to Style from Drab to Fab. Tell me a little about, about this book. 
It's a book for ladies. Sorry, there's only one chapter for a man. That's okay. That's okay. Most <laughs> of the people, probably 90% of the people listening are ladies. I am, awesome. Uh, we have this Facebook group um, to help people through breakups. I'm literally the only guy in there. I feel so alone. Oh God, I, I need to get but some you're more so mail. Kind. We need your point of view. True, true. But mostly my wife, she's the one that answers most of the people. And then I jump on Facebook Live every once in a while. But uh, right. we got way off topic. Your book. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. My book, Ultimate Guide to Sub from Jot to Fab. It's basically um, a makeover to take anyone from drab to fab. If you are already like your style and know what's going on, I guarantee I'm probably going to teach you something that you're not doing that you don't know about. So it's more of like an educated style. And I go everything from dressing in the workplace to date dressing to how to clean out your closet, how to organize, where should the clothing hit you, uh, how to shop, how to shop for discounts. It's like 17 chapters of just like all my fashion wisdom. It's awesome. So it's not like one of those cheapy books. It's like yeah. 50 pages, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the, the interesting aspect is I feel like I cover a lot of the sort of strategy behind getting an ex back. But one area where I certainly lack or where ex-boyfriend recovery certainly lacks is what you're talking about, the style, how to look, which is kind of an important thing. So I can't recommend this book enough. Um, and Thank you. just to let you, I'm totally going to blast my email list out for you and make a big deal on this Facebook group and everything about it. Because Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, now I feel like I have to give you a promo code. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, but you know, we wouldn't mind I'd it. Be nice. <laughs> All right, I'm going to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ultimate Guide to Style from Drab to Fab. Um, s how how many pages? 173. So it's not too, <laughs> too long, but it's long enough to where you're really going to get something out of it. Yeah, you could read it in two days. You know, it's not a, it's not a boring fashion book. I read, before writing this book, I really wanted to make something unique. So I, mm. we put in our different stories of, you know, me going to the movies in a dress where um, I was so cold, like my nipples were so sore the whole evening because <laughs> I was like freezing to death. So that's why you don't wear a dress to the movie theater. Um, or sorry, at least bring a much. coat or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what or, else? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. The guy didn't <laughs> offer you his coat. What kind of what kind of dates are you going on here? Well, yeah, I didn't marry that guy. So there <laughs> you have it. <laughs> you married, but you, of course, you dressed the guy. So you had already pre-planned that in to, you know, the movie dates. You already had yeah. him get his coat. Yeah, no, no, no. My husband would always give someone his clothes. Even when we went hiking, he would like pick off the nails off of the streets so people didn't get a flat tire. And I was like, whoa, That's I know people really that are nice. kind. Yeah. Yeah. There are people that are kind that are kind to people when other people can see them. And then there's kindness where no, one no one's looking, no right. one can see. And I was like, wow, that really stuck out too. That's to what that's what really did it for you. Not the style, but like the sweetness of it, right? Right. But the style <laughs> helps. <laughs> the st At least you're right. honest about it. <laughs> All right. So where can people find you? Why oh, floor is yours. Talk about your website. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. Uh, <laughs> Style by Rain, R A Y N E, and you I'll can link, get. I'll link it up in the show notes too. By the way. Oh, perfect. Uh, you can just go there. You can sign up to my newsletter. I don't bombard you that much. It's just all about basic tips. I have how to dress for dates on there. I have uh, my book link on there. You can contact me. I'm a pretty open book. You can email me. You can ask me any questions. Instagram is at Rain Parvis. And there I have da daily inspirations on how to be bold and all kinds of beautiful, including my dog and my cat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And then um, also, so you even make over your dog and cat. Like you. Oh, so when you do have your child. It's yes. going to be probably the most perfect looking family. You'll be, you'll be able to give Donald Trump's family a run for their money. You should run for office. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. God bless him. Well, okay. So I also like to say fashion should be a little bit messy. Whenever you see someone that's like so put together from head uh, to toe and I see a lot of stylist Instagrams, like they're so perfect and they're so put together. I'm like, there's no freaking personality there. Right. <laughs> Right. So I'm a little messy. Okay. I like to get my hands dirty. I don't put perfect photos of myself all day long. Um, I just tell it to you like it is. I want you to feel beautiful the way you are. Anybody can look good, any race, color, size, shape, no matter what chapter you are in your life. And that's pretty much what I inspire to inspire others to do. Yeah. I'm totally going to promote you 
to hell and back. Seriously, I I feel like oh, a lot of the I feel like you. a lot of the people like can legitimately get something out of this. And I don't say that to all the guests that come on to this podcast. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners, if he does say all that to all the guests, you have to email me and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I promise. You can. Okay. It's all there, public record. You can. You can look. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I well, totally love it. Any last words of wisdom for people going through breakups and need some help with style? Um, I guess my last words of wisdom would actually be for you. You're an awesome host. Uh, oh, thank you have you. a very, very <laughs> relatable personality, and I think that your your guests are in great hands. And I'm just happy to be here. Well, it was it was a pleasure having you, Rain. Yeah. Before we end, I yes. do have to say you have the coolest name ever. Like Rain, it is spelled R A Y N E, but. Yes. I think of rain, like it's raining outside right now. So it must have been like perfect. It you know? was rainy. My dad's name is Wayne, W-A-Y-N-E. I'm a daddy's girl. So oh, that's where we got the name that from. That is clever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he is waiting for grandchildren. So okay. send me some. Uh... <laughs> don't, don't. Do, I've, I've been through the conversation where, you know, the, the in-laws and everything are like, when are you going to have kids? I've been so through annoying. that. Yeah, and then I know. your listeners, I'm sure your listeners' parents are like, "When are you going to find the right one?" Right. But trust me, we've right. all been it's, there. Too. It's There's always another thing too. Like we we so we gave we gave uh, you know the grandparents the the grandchild. Now guess what it is? When are you going to have another one? It's like oh man, just <laughs> nothing's ever enough. <laughs> It's not, I mean, it was the same thing from when are you going to meet the right guy? When are you mm. going to get married? When are you going to have a baby? Then you said, like, when are you going to do that? What? It's just like, yeah, it's never enough. Let's embrace where we are today and go with the flow. Amen. Amen. Well, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a I lot, I enjoyed Ray. this too. I, I'm definitely going to promote your book, Ultimate Guide for to Style from Drab to Fab. You can find Rain's website in the show notes of this episode, which will be on my website, and I'll link up to her Instagram so you can look at her puppies and well, <laughs> your, your your pets, basically. That yeah, that, okay. There's more than a dog and a cat. Okay, <laughs> there's like great okay. photos. All right, okay, all right. there's before and afters. There's just great thoughts, whatever. Like I said, it's not perfect. It's a little bit messy, just like life. So I think that your um your audience will really enjoy it. Yep. Well, it was a pleasure, Rain. Thank you so much for coming on. Bye. Bye.